we, we have a look at the difference between the left's response to the assassination, i.e. the left's response to their political opponent being in danger, and then the right's response when Nancy Pelosi's husband uh, was attacked with a hammer. Uh, yeah, well, I, I, that's, that's, that's the, the two things we're about to look at for this last kind of uh, 90 seconds of, of Brian for the day. AOC, there's no place for political violence, including the horrific incident we just witnessed in Pennsylvania. It is absolutely unacceptable and must be denounced in the strongest terms. My heart goes out to all the victims and I wish the former president a speedy recovery. Chris Murphy, there's no room in America for political violence. We should all condemn what happened today and I'm hoping for the health of the former president and everyone else at the rally. And Joe Biden. There's no place in America for this kind of violence, or for any violence ever. No, that's the thing I kind of like. Joe, do you, are you aware mm -hmm. of the country? I mean, I get the sentiment in this instance, but are you aware that you probably live in the most violent country in the world with more uh, deaths by gun than anywhere else, that in prisons more people per capita than, or more people than anybody else? So I'm just like, I, I get why you're saying this in this rhetoric, but I'd like to circle back to this conversation at another time, Joe. Maybe we could just do that about the violence in your country. Period. No exceptions. We can't allow this violence to be normalized. Meanwhile, here's how the right reacted when it's a Democrat who's the victim. Paul Pelosi's bludgeoned with a hammer, and Don Jr. posts, Got my Paul Pelosi Halloween costume ready. Here's Marjorie Taylor Greene getting her audience to boo Paul Pelosi at a rally. Where Americans are robbed, stabbed, raped, kidnapped, carjacked, and murdered. But only, the only crime victim you hear about from Democrats in the media is Paul Pelosi. And of course, Trump himself poking fun at Paul Pelosi after he was attacked. And we'll stand up to crazy Nancy Pelosi who ruined San Francisco. How's her husband doing, by the way? Anybody know? And she's against building a wall at our border, even though she has a wall around her house which obviously didn't do a very good job. So no, both parties are not the same. Let's not pretend that one doesn't immediately and unequivocally condemn violence while the other one revels in it. The only difference is that the pearl clutching on the right only begins when the violence happens to them. There you go. So I, that's, you'll see now why I wanted to play Brian's, but it synopsizes mm. everything perfectly. And none of this is to have any kind of... Uh, What's the word? We're not saying so, so ha ha, there you go, you got it your time. It's actually just to take a step back and look at this broader issue and go, those on the right who are now blaming the left in America, even though the shooter was a Republican, and the left have a history of em empathizing and wanting the best when it happens to people on the right, and the right have a history of mocking when violence happens to people on the left. You know, it's just, let's just, let's look at this isolated incident for, for an attack, a potential attack on, on this presidential candidate and address it as, in, with the seriousness it needs. But if you want to start taking a step back and looking at the overall issue, yeah, Republicans, you got a few more questions to answer, I believe. Chewy. Yeah. Um, I, I had someone ask me, you know, because we're obviously going to be talking about this tonight. It, it's like, what does it matter to us here in New Zealand? And I think when you look at how the American political discussion, the tone of it has changed over over the last 15 years, yeah, I see echoes of it in our own discussion. It has become more polarised, more um, extreme in a lot of ways. And certainly yeah. since COVID... Um, we've seen things that, like, New Zealand's the country of anyone puts forward a strong opinion, everybody turns to them and goes, all right, mate, settle down. Um, and and now we're getting quite extreme conversations or positions, like, normalised. And I think you've said it quite a few times, you know, if, if America sneezes, the rest of us catch a cold. The world catches um, a cold. You know, and it's... <laughs> I know people that live in the states that are scared of this this coming election, but there is a hope that this will scare people in into a direction of maybe trying to take this a bit seriously. But there are again, there are so many people 
over in the states that are disengaged from the process they don't think anybody speaks to them the system is actively set up to not listen to them to not enable them to have their say it's a deeply flawed and uneven system so is this going to be a shock to the system or is this a bump on a, a pathway that they're just locked into at this point yeah and that whole if the when america sneezes the world catches the cold i think isn't clearer than the last trump election i mean you look at the amount of conspiracy theorists um you know the media is evil you know covid vaccines are trying to control us bill gates microchips that all started in america under trump and then flowed out through the world the world caught a cold well i i, I think there's there's a really good point here as well the amount of russian influence into the american sphere the yeah. amount of money disinformation bots um into social media and that sort of thing to destabilize their biggest global um, threat or rival and also that just ramped up when they went into ukraine yeah. and they know that this is a way that they can just keep you know ukraine's biggest supporter biggest supplier of weapons on the back foot and they know if trump gets in Putin will run rings around him. NATO will dissolve yeah. and Ukraine support dries up.